My hot take on cilantro is as follows. Hey, Abby, and happy Friday. You asked me for a food hot take, and my food hot take is on a very controversial food, cilantro. Now you may or may not be surprised to hear that my hot take on cilantro is not about cilantro itself, but about the discussion and controversy around cilantro. Cilantro, as you know, is a very polarizing flavor. It has spawned such great internet communities as the cilantro haters and the cilantro hater haters. People get real worked up about this one uh, because people need something to get worked up over. My hot take on cilantro is as follows. People's like or dislike of cilantro is not totally genetically determined. Now wait, you say, Adam, what about, what about PTC? What about PTC things? Well, PTC is probably the most well-documented case of people being able to taste a thing or not taste a thing being determined genetically. Some people do this test in a science class or it can be in a variety of situations, but essentially you'll be brought up in front of a group of people. A bunch of you are given a little strip of paper and you put it on your tongue and you see if you taste something. A certain percentage of people, about one in four people, will taste something bitter. Like me, I've taken the test a few times and I'm definitely someone who can taste PTC. And everyone else will just not taste anything. It's been reasonably well researched that the ability to taste PTC is associated with having a certain kind of bitter taste receptor, and that is directly determined by a particular gene. Side note, people who can taste PTC are sometimes called super tasters. But the more I learn about super tasting, super tasting, the less impressed I am by it. About 25% of people are said to be super tasters, 50% like middle tasters, and 25% not very good tasters, I guess. Looking at the amount of research that's been done on this, the literature is surprisingly sparse on what it means to be a super taster. And the more I read on it, the more it seems less like, you know, a crazy cool gift or talent, like having perfect pitch. And more it's just like, well, yeah, you guess you can taste a little bit better than the average person. The idea that like only one chef in a kitchen might be a super taster is kind of whack. It really is likely that if you are in a kitchen and there are a lot of different chefs there that they're all technically in the bracket that would be considered super tasters. Now, it's always a, a, like a fun fact thing for your fun facts forum or your fun food facts thing that people say, oh, there's a genetic determinant for whether you do or do not like cilantro. And they always put it like that. It's determined by your genes whether you like cilantro or you don't. And a lot of people at that point point to these studies on PTC and they'll say, you know, if you can taste PTC, then you don't like cilantro. But here's the thing. A lot of research has been done on cilantro tasting and on PTC, and cilantro doesn't actually activate the taste bud that's associated with PTC. So that part of the common formulation of this fun fact is debunked. But it's hypothesized that cilantro might work like PTC. Like there's something that can be tasted or smelt in cilantro that some people will genetically be able to detect and some people won't. And there is some evidence for this. Yes, I did read a couple of research papers in preparation for this video. Though disclaimer, I don't know what the frick I'm talking about. What we know is that it's genetically determined whether people can taste PTC or they can't, not whether they do or do not like the taste of PTC. The PTC on its own doesn't taste all that great. I think a lot of people want to say that cilantro activates that taste receptor because people who don't like cilantro often describe it as soapy, and PTC definitely tastes soapy. But nothing that's in cilantro has been shown to activate that taste bud. So again, we're talking about not whether cilantro has PTC, but whether tasting cilantro works like tasting PTC. And the more research I read on this, and there is a good amount of it out there, but it's all surprisingly inconclusive. It seems like there are like a bajillion tastes and smells that have some level of heritability about whether or not you can taste them really well or not so well. But mapping all these onto specific genes and figuring out what exactly they're activating 
is not something that's been done. Another flavor that people describe as sometimes being able to taste and sometimes not is the taste of cruciferous vegetables, which I always describe as root heat. I'm kind of sensitive to that one. Again, what I think that people get wrong about cilantro is in the way they formulate this thing. Genetics determine whether or not you like cilantro. And there's a part of this one study that I read. It was actually a study citing another study, but it makes this pretty clear. There was a study done in 2004, I believe, and it asked monozygotic, or what we call identical twins, and dizygotic, or what we call fraternal twins, to rate the pleasantness of cilantro. That study found that about 80% of identical twins rated the pleasantness of cilantro exactly the same, while only about 42% of fraternal twins rated it the same. Now, these numbers show that there is some amount of correlation between your genetics and your like of cilantro. Identical twins tend to have the same opinions on cilantro. Fraternal twins tend to have different opinions on cilantro. But here's the thing. If liking cilantro or finding cilantro to be pleasant was totally determined by genetics, you would expect this number over here to be 100%. After all, these people have exactly the same genes at birth. So it seems like it's true that there is a genetic component in whether people like or don't like cilantro, but liking or not liking cilantro is not completely determined by your genetics. The reason I've always felt this way is because anytime I hear someone describe the flavors that they don't like in cilantro, if there's someone who really doesn't like cilantro, they'll say it's soapy or astringent or the taste evokes like stink bugs to them. I love cilantro and I every time I hear those descriptions, I feel like I taste all those exact same things. I have the same associations and yet I still like cilantro. I'm convinced that I taste the thing that people taste in cilantro when they say that they don't like it and yet I still like it. And I would imagine that lots of other people are kind of the same way. I think things like food preferences are super duper complicated and I think trying to even figure out how they work is like a massive task of like trying to understand a really complicated thing. But as with many things, it can't be reduced to just the one thing. And the fun formulation of that fun fact isn't exactly accurate, I don't think. This is anecdotal, but at least according to our friend Emily, there was a study done where you blindfold people and you have them smell baked Parmesan cheese and vomit. And uh, they, they can't tell the difference when blindfolded, but if you tell them it's the cheese, they're more likely to describe the smell as appetizing. If you tell them it's the vomit, then they're more likely to gag or think it's like real nasty. And it's apparently because there's an enzyme in both that gives off the same smell. But the whole idea is that the, the way that the flavor is presented to you shapes your interpretation of it. Flavor, smell, same thing, kind of. I think that that is a huge part of the way that people experience foods. If you're used to eating cilantro growing up and it's in a lot of yummy food, whether or not you taste this particular flavor in it or not, you're likely to still like it even if it even if you're detecting something that other people might not. Whereas if the only times you're eating cilantro are when it's presented to you as like here's a new thing you can try, maybe you will or won't like it. If you taste a strong flavor in there, especially as a kid, maybe you're more likely to not like it. Maybe you're more likely to carry that association with you throughout your whole life. I think it's a combination of both. Anyway, I, I probably have other food hot takes, but this is the one I've always wanted to get off my chest. So uh, stop oversimplifying cilantro.